Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this a little bit unusual video, I'm going to compare two different computers that I have assembled for two different customers. This is not going to be a fair comparison because the computers are completely different. The customers are also very different and they had very different requirements. Still, I think it's going to be an interesting comparison, but first a few words about each of the computers. The first computer is this one and the customer had the following requirements. First of all, the price must be somewhere around 800 euros. Then I'm only allowed to use any new components, so the warranty is still valid. And then lastly, I need to include Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with the computer. So what I have done, first of all, I picked a used fractal design chassis because warranty for chassis makes no sense, but I can save some money. Then for the CPU I picked Ryzen 5 5500, for the memory I have 16 gigs Corsair DDR4 3200, the motherboard is from Asus, it's a A520 motherboard, but it comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. For storage I have this Team Group SSD for 1TB, M.2 and VME. The graphics card is also from Asus and this one is AMD Radeon RX 6600. For the power supply I have this cheap uh, high power SP650 unit. According to the specification it's able to deliver up to 50 amperes on the 12 volts rail, so it is more than enough for this very energy efficient computer. Now let's take a quick look how quickly this computer will boot into Windows from the power button. So first I start the timer and then I click the power button. And by the way, do you hear the computer? I don't. And I was very pleasantly surprised of how quiet the AMD stock fan is compared to the Intel stock fan. Of course it's still not the best cooler. Okay, here we are. So we are in Windows. It was less than 18 seconds. So this is a very good result and I don't think we can make it much faster than that. So another test would be to check how quickly the computer will restart. Windows always does some crazy stuff or some un unnecessary caching and other stuff when a computer is shutting down and when a computer is starting up. And we are almost back to Windows. Yes, we are almost back to Windows, so the restart cycle took less than 28 seconds if we consider that I also took some time to press the button and start stop the timer. The second computer is this one and it's completely different compared to the first one. The customer also had completely different requirements. So the first one is the price, somewhere around 500 euros. Then I have to use a white chassis and the computer must come with RGB lights. So with these restrictions I have done the following. For the chassis I picked this white Dutzo chassis from a local Swedish store. This is some sort of a local unknown brand. They make chassis and CPU coolers in China and then importing them to Sweden in big batches. For the motherboard I have here Huanan x 99 qd4 and for the CPU which is hiding under this TJ400 Chinese RGB cooler I have Xeon E5 2690v3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock of course. For the memory I have 32 gigs, two 8 sticks here and two 8 sticks there. This is HyperX DDR4 2133 memory, non-ECC memory, but it was rather cheap on the second-hand market because it's very slow compared to the today's standard. For the graphics card I picked a second-hand AMD Radeon RX Vega 64 and in combination with the Xeon Fi 2690v3 with the unlocked Turbo Boost and 32 gigs of RAM in quad-channel memory configuration, the performance shall be very close to Ryzen 5 5500 AMD RX 6600 from the previous computer. Now, for the storage, as you can see here, I have connected the SATA cable, so I'm using a SATA SSD. This time this is SunDisk for 512GB. To properly cool down the computer, I have installed two extra chassis fans, and the first one, this one, is an interesting one. I found it in a pile of my secondhand fans. This fan has external control, so you can rotate this uh, thumb and increase or decrease the rotation speed of the fan. It is very nice because Huanan GX99 QD4 motherboard has a working smart fan only for the CPU fan. And this chassis fan is connected straight to the power supply, it rotates at a constant speed, which is good enough because it does not make a lot of noise, and it still brings some airflow into the chassis and over this uh, especially important zone where we have the VRM. 
Xeon E5 2690V3 and RX Vega 64 are rather power hungry, so I had to find a decent power supply and I found EVGA Supernova 750G3. This is a good power supply with 80 plus gold certification, so it will handle the task pretty well. All in all, it's a very nice little computer for 500 euros and it shall be able to compete with the Ryzen 5 5500 and the AMD RX 6600. Okay, now let's see how quickly this computer will start. So, launching the timer and clicking the power button. The noise from the Vega 64 graphics card because it's ramping up its fans to 100% at the booting time. We still don't see anything on the screen. Now we have the annoying 100 beep. Now the system starts. 26, 25 seconds, not bad at all, not bad at all for a Chinese Huanantri motherboard. But now it's time to restart the computer and see how much time that will take. Restart usually takes quite a bunch of time with the Chinese Huanantri motherboard, so let's see how this is gonna go. Still booting, now here is the Huanantri beep. Here we see something on the screen, Windows is loading. And we are here. So about 35 seconds, very close to the Ryzen results, so not bad at all. I actually expected much worse results for the Chinese Huanantri X99 motherboard. For the additional bias settings I had to do the following. For the first computer with the Ryzen 5 CPU, I had to only enable the memory XMP profile and then enable a resizable bar or rebar or smart access memory, how AMD called them. And then for the Xeon computer, I had to do a little bit more. First, I had to apply the modified BIOS for X99 QD4 motherboard with Turbo Boost Unlock with resizable bar support, and then with RAM timings unlocked. Because the motherboard does not support XMP profiles, I had to manually enter the RAM timings. Here I have also slightly tightened the timings. The standard XMP profile for my memory is DDR4 2133CL14 and I have applied settings for CL13. I have also disabled hybrid threading because 12 core Xeon E5 2690V3 does not benefit from hybrid threading in gaming and the computer is gonna be used for gaming mostly. As you can see, these two computers are completely different and it would be interesting to swap the graphics cards and see what kind of performance we would get with the AMD Ryzen 5 plus AMD RX Vega compared to Xeon E5 plus RX 6600. Unfortunately, I had very limited time with this computer, so I could not complete all the tests, thus I have tested as is one computer and the other computer. For synthetic benchmarks, I only executed Cinebench R23. The first system with Ryzen 5 scores about 1400 points when only one CPU core is used, and when all CPU cores are utilized, we are getting about 10150 points. The power consumption under this load is 48 and 112 watts. As you can see, the system is extremely power efficient. On the other side, Xeon E5 system scores 826 points when one CPU core is used and almost 8600 points when all CPU cores are used. Here I remind again that I have disabled hyperthreading. With enabled hyperthreading, E5 2690v3 would score more. When a single CPU core is used, the Xeon system consumes 83 watts and with all CPU cores utilized 201 watts. When it comes to the memory performance, we are getting very similar results. Even though DDR4-2133 is significantly slower than DDR4-3200, we are comparing dual-channel and quad-channel memory configurations. The memory latency is also pretty much the same. DDR4-3200-CL16 is very close to DDR4-2133-CL13. Now, let me test some games. The first test of the game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as always. Here I test high graphical preset at 1080p. The first system with Ryzen 5 and RX 6600 gives us 66 and 96 frames per second. The second system with Xeon E5 and RX Vega delivers 49 and 77 FPS. What's more important is that the new system consumes just a little bit more than 200 watts in this game, while the old system with the Xeon E5 and RX Vega consumes more than 400 watts, so the power consumption is doubled. 
Increasing the screen resolution to 1440p doesn't change much. Yeah, the first system delivers 48 and 65 FPS and the second one is 39 58 FPS. The second game is Far Cry 6, again high graphical preset 1080p. The results are a bit odd. Ryzen 5 system delivers 69 and 95 FPS and Xeony 5 system delivers 78 and 97 FPS. I do not have a clear explanation for this result because Ryzen 5 has clock frequency higher than 4 GHz, while Xeon E5 is limited to 3.5 GHz. Probably the huge amount of cache helps the Xeon in this game. Still, increasing the resolution to 1440p brings us back the usual result. The first system with the Ryzen CPU delivers 68 and 81 FPS, and the second system with the Xeon and Vega delivers 62 and 74 FPS. The next tested game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again high graphical preset 1080p. The performance is very close, 92 and 117 FPS for the first system with the Ryzen CPU and 89 and 110 FPS for the second system. As you can see, the gap is there, but it is very small. At 1440p the gap is actually growing. This is a little bit weird, because RX Vega 64 uses HPM or height bandwidth memory, and I would expect that at a higher resolution it would catch up or maybe even overtake RX 6600, but it is what it is. The first system with RX 6600 delivers 7181 FPS. The second system with Vega 64 gives us only 6576 FPS. The next game is F1 2021, again 1080p, high graphical preset. The first system with Ryzen 5 and RX 6600 delivers 182 and 221 FPS. Xeon E5 paired with RX Vega 64 delivers only 163 and 199 FPS. This result is not bad at all, and I would actually say it's a pretty good result for such an old hardware like Xeon E5 2690v3. At 1440p the picture is about the same. The first system scores 140 and 163 FPS, while the second one delivers only 121 and 146 FPS, so the gap is about the same. The final tested game is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here I tested the balanced preset, and much to my surprise, both of the systems deliver very close results. Starting at 1080p we get 82 and 120 FPS with the first system and 85 113 FPS with the second system. It's a bit odd to see minimal FPS slightly better with the Xeon Plus Vega, while the averages are better with Ryzen Plus RX 6600. To play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 1440p you probably would want something stronger than these two computers, but still the performance is decent and very equal between the two systems. 5785 FPS for the first PC with the Ryzen and RX 6600 and 5783 FPS with the older Xeon E5 and RX Vega 64. Now, if I take average across all these test results, we get the following. At 1080p, the new system with Ryzen 5 and RX 6600 delivers 96 and 125 FPS. The old system with the Xeon E5 and RX Vega is slightly behind, 93 and 119 FPS. At 1440p, the FPS numbers are significantly lower, but the gap is still there. The first system delivers 74 and 92 FPS compared to 69 and 88 FPS with the Xeon E5 and RX Vega. This is all I could test with the limited amount of time I had to play with these computers. As you can see, the computers are very different, and as I have said, it is not a fair comparison, still the performance is very close. If you find such comparison to be interesting to watch, then maybe in the future I will make a bit more such videos, where I just compare performance of two different computers that I assemble for my customers. Speaking about this specific comparison, as always, I leave the conclusion on you. In some cases, in some countries, it is very important to have the best performance per watt, in other cases, in other countries, it's more important to have the best performance per dollar, so it will be your money and your decision to buy this or that, and maybe you can combine them and have Ryzen 5 with AMD RX Vega or Xeon E5 and AMD RX 6600. So, that's your decision, my responsibility is to demonstrate to you what kind of performance you can get, for what level of money and with what hardware. So, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, bye bye.